right, all right, all right. Welcome back to another episode of the Ideas Exchange presented by InExpress Podcast. This is the podcast where we talk about marketing, entrepreneurship, business, franchising, being a franchisor, tech, whatever else you want to throw in there. We talk about that on this podcast. And my guest today is Dustin Hansen. And I usually have a bio or something that I read about our guests, but you just got to hear it from the man himself. I'm going to throw it over to him. Dustin, how are you? Tell everyone who you are, why you're here, all that good stuff. Excellent. I'm doing good, Paul. Thanks for having me on. I'm really pumped to be with you. And uh, obviously, there's so much valuable content that uh, you've been able to facilitate through this. Hopefully, I can be in, a, uh, in addition to that content. But uh, I did uh, just a quick introduction of myself. Um, I, how I got uh, involved in the business world, I was uh, going to school at Utah Valley University as a pilot uh, back in 2000, and I got bit by the entrepreneurial bug. And so after serving a two-year church mission, um, I decided to look into franchising as a way to uh, be a, a business owner. And I came across InExpress, um, and I jumped in and bought the very first InExpress franchise in the U.S. It was established in the U.K., but I bought the very first franchise in the U.S., um, that was in 2006. I became the CEO of InExpress in the Americas in 2012. I also joined the InExpress Global Board of Directors. Um, and I served as the CEO for InExpress up until and through June of 2022. Uh, and I am still a global board member at InExpress. And I'm also a board member for the International Franchise Association. So I see myself as a small business lover, uh, specifically in the uh, franchising space, but uh, I love all things small business. So you know a little something about all of that, I would say. You've been in it for a while. You've seen it from a bunch of different angles. You kind of know what you're talking about. And that's good because today's topic is pretty awesome and interesting. We're talking about beginning with the end in mind, how to create enterprise value for your business. So I guess, first of all, what is enterprise value? Let's start there and kind of define that for the listeners and we'll see where we go from there. Yeah, listen, the, the definition and the way I view enterprise value is the value of your enterprise, the value of your business. How much is your business worth? And we'll talk um, throughout this podcast about how to define that and how the, the influences of what your business is worth. But I think just understanding the fact that this enterprise value concept is out there and that as a small business owner, you should be very aware of how to influence uh, the enterprise value is critically important. And so, um, again, starting with in mind, understanding enterprise value, understanding what the actual business is worth and how you drive value creation for your small business. Because ultimately, this is your asset. You've built a small business. Mm -hmm. It is your asset. And you want that asset to be worth as much as possible. Yeah, because, I mean, let's, let's all face the reality. We're not going to work until we're six feet under, not to sound too morbid, but at some point we're going to want to hang it up, call it a day and walk away, right? Maybe there's some out there that still want to work until they just can't anymore. But at the end of the day, we want to be able to build a business that hopefully we're either passing on or we're slapping a for sale sticker on and we're going to sell it later on down the road. So uh, where, how do we figure that out? You can't just say, I don't think uh, my business is worth this and, and just go out there and throw the for sale sticker on there and walk away. So how do we determine that and how do we work towards that that number? Yeah, I think I think first and foremost, taking kind of a step back a little bit, um, Stephen R. Covey teaches in his seven habits of highly effective people that you have to start with the end in mind. And so you, you said it right, that there is an exit that every business will experience. Mm -hmm. And in reality, there's only really one exit and that is the business being sold. Yeah, you might pass it on to you know your child or a friend or something, but eventually the business will need to get sold. And so the reality is understanding that at some point your business will be sold and that's the end. So we got to figure out, all right, starting with the end, knowing that the business is going to be sold at some point. Well, now our objective is, yeah, yeah we want to create revenue and all that throughout the, the course of its lifetime, but we got to at, at that point, when the business is ready to be sold, you want to sell it for the very maximum value, right? It's just like having a home. You want to sell your home for the best value you can get from your home. And, and it's the same concept with a business. You want to sell your business for the maximum value. It, it demonstrates the hard work you put into it and allows you to create that equity event that then gives you the realization of the goals that you've set for yourself. So knowing that that's the end. Knowing that we want to, you know, that our business is going to sell, 
that we've got to figure out how do we understand what the enterprise value is and then how do we influence it? And yeah, yeah to your point, right? So the question is then how do you know what your business is worth? Right. Yeah. It's not about the revenue number. I don't think, right. It's I mean, not it's part no. of it, but yeah, it's lo lots of different factors. And, and, and the, the first thing to understand for any you know business owner is that the, the value of anything uh, really is in the uh, eyes of the buyer, right? Because mm. I, I could have an heirloom passed down by my grandma and to me it has a, high, a lot of value, but to you it's worthless. So the perception that a buyer has certainly influences um, the value. So we knowing that the value is in the high, in the, in the, in the eye of the, of the buyer, then we can start talking about, well, how do we help a buyer have that perception or how do we help them analyze and come to the conclusion that the value of your business is as high as possible? Mm. Yeah. So what, what's the magic number? How do we, sure. where do we start? Where do we go? And it's going to be a sliding scale over the course of the, of the life of the business, right? It will, but the basic fundamental principle is the the higher the risk for a new buyer, the lower the value. The lower the risk, the higher the value. So some of the, the KPIs, the key performance indicators that a business owner wants to look at, and it's different for every business, but there are some certain um, uh, principles that we can apply across any business. And for example, one of those is diversification. It's hmm. pretty obvious that if you have a business and 90% of that business revenue comes from one customer. That's not diversified. And right. so new buyer comes in and buys your business and that one large customer has issues or you lose that customer, then obviously it impacts the business overall. So it's a very high risk. And mm -hmm. therefore the buyer is going to evaluate the enterprise value much lower. But if you have a diversified revenue stream of a whole bunch of customers, um, or at least diversified service and products within those customers, all of a sudden, the risk for a new buyer comes down substantially, which then increases the value of that business to that buyer. So the first frame of reference to keep in mind is to use this risk value co correlation where mm -hmm. you want to bring down that risk through these KPIs that we can talk more about so that, that therefore it increases the value to that buyer. So where where would you start? Do you want that? Do you want to start at the low or do you want to start at the high, but you want to find that medium ground? Is that what we're aiming for? Yeah. We, what you want to do is you want to, in the, the business, any small business has an evolution, right? So you start day one, you get your first customer. Well, you have one customer, right? So you, it's not diversified. You can't judge yourself too quickly uh, as, as you build your business right. out. But as long as you're thinking, okay, the, the exit strategy, the end of the movie, starting with the end of mine is to sell my business. Mm -hmm. It helps you start to make uh, really important uh, decisions along the way. So you start getting a customer and you start certain, uh, selling a certain product and then you get more customers selling that product. Well, you'd be thinking to yourself, well, what if this certain product becomes something that the market no longer wants? Well, that obviously puts my business at risk. So if I can diversify into a second product or a second service mm. that my existing customers and new customers are going to want to take a part of, then it starts to, again, give yourself more of that width that you're looking for, more of that diversification you're looking for. Mm. Um, now, that's easy to talk about, diversification, number of customers, mm -hmm. diversification, number of products or services. But where you start to get even more granular as you're thinking about this is, you know, where do those customers come from? Did you acquire those customers all from, you know, e-commerce uh, platforms or by advertising through email marketing campaign or by, you know, telesales reps making phone calls on your behalf? The more diversification you can get on customer acquisition, again, lessens the risk for a, a potential new buyer down the road and increases that value. So really the, the first starting point is that diversification in so many different areas uh, of the business. Now it, it evolves to more financial metrics. Um, mm -hmm. Once you start getting kind of diversification down to where, you know, what is your your risk profile uh, it, when it comes to cash flow? So, for example, uh, you know if you sell a, a certain product or service and you're making a five percent gross margin, well, mm -hmm. that, you know that means you have a ninety five percent risk of cost. Where if you're not mm -hmm. able to sell that product or service, that you have ninety five percent of that that you have to you know eat as an owner of the business. And so, you know, then you start to go, how do I increase my gross margin, which we all want to do. But mm -hmm. even more than that, how do I put the right products and services in place where I get a good blended gross margin? Again, reducing that risk to increase the value. Yeah. Eating costs never tastes good unless it's with a side addressing. Maybe, 
maybe. maybe. But go, going back to the diversification thing, is I, I like that. And I think that's a good thing to maybe touch more on. Um, as you start to diversify, you get that that core customer group, right? You start to develop other things that are within that. So if you're an e-commerce platform, for instance, you're acquiring customers through that and you're seeing, okay, well, if I lean more kind of in this vertical, I really don't have the necessary tools to, to snag that audience. I've got to develop that. I've got to build those tools. And so that's a way to kind of diversify your business as well as you're building proprietary softwares and processes and things like that to help uh, build the the business as well. So, I mean, would you agree with that? Should, should people look at that type of stuff as well, not just the customer base or what are your thoughts there? Yeah, 100%. I mean, diversification in and of itself, in all areas of the business is a positive thing, right? The more mm -hmm. diversified, the more healthy that, that, you'll, that you'll get. Now, there, there's going to be certain buyers out there that might know your specific business than other buyers. And so what mm -hmm. one buyer thinks is high risk, another might buyer might see as low risk. And so again, it depends on you know ultimately the values in the, is in the eye of the of the buyer, uh, and buyers are not all created equal. Um, but certainly, if if you put that aside for a second, just executing the principle of diversification in any area, customers, service offering, marketing channels, I mean, you name it. The more diversified you get, you lower the risk because you have multi mediums that you're covering off, right? You're spreading yeah. uh, out out that uh, again that risk so that it, it lowers everything else. And I think that. Um, that then creates the right framework for making decisions. Because I think uh, my, my, I, I tease my wife, right? When she goes into a store, she's a wandering generality, right? She, she, <laughs> she's, there, she's there to look at everything, <laughs> make her decision. Um, you know, I'm more of a meaningful specific. I know what I've come into that store for, and I'm going to make that decision to get whatever it is I came in there for. In and out, in and out. In and out. <laughs> but it's similar with the business decision. If you know that you're trying to diversify or you know that you're trying to lower risk or you know the fact that you're going to sell your business then when it comes to the decision of okay i've got this money to invest where do i invest it well now it becomes a lot easier of a decision to make a business decision to make because you already know that i need to diversify in this area so i'm going to hire a person to help me there or i'm going to you know do a certain business strategy to help me fortify this area that maybe i'm not as diversified in and so it starts to create really fast, clean, and effective decision-making inside that business. Mm, yeah, that's so well said. That's that's awesome. So when, when people are starting out and it's exciting to get that logo, it's exciting to get that domain name, right? It's all the fun stuff at the beginning. I always hear about the five, 10, 15 year plans. How far out do we need to be thinking uh, when we're thinking about the end? Is it 15, 20, 25? Like, what is that number? That's a really good question. Um, and that that's one of those answers where it really depends on like what, what the person wants and where they are. Uh, mm -hmm. and to me, when you think 15 years out, like that's so far away and the world changes so much in 15 years, that's hard to really have a good pulse on that kind of a time frame, right? For yeah. me, that three years is a nice kind of milestone. But let's say that you know you're a new business owner, you're in your mid 30s, and you have set your personal life mission and goal that you want to create certain number of wealth by the time you're 45. Well, okay, that, that's a 10 year horizon then. So you can mm -hmm. say, all right, well, 10 years, here's what I want to get to. And then you can chunk it back to three year milestones and create those strategies and plans that fit inside those three year uh, milestones. Three years. I haven't heard anybody say that before. So that's, that's new. Three year milestone. I like that. So again, talking about a brand new business owner, um, where do we put pen to paper and really start to begin and focus? Do you focus on one area first versus another, or what, what does that look like? Are we, are we talking customer service, marketing? Where, where are we going to put the most emphasis right out of the gate? Well, a lot of, a lot of new business owners, um, hear this topic of enterprise value, right. And, and exiting and, mm -hmm. and they're new and they're thinking to themselves, that's the farthest thought from my mind. Like I'm not even, <laughs> I don't even want to think about that right now. I just want to survive. Like I, I want to get, make money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I want to get this business off the ground. Uh, I want to, you know, pay the bills. Uh, I want to prove that I can establish a business that has some longevity to it. Um, and, and I get all that. I've been there a few times within uh, my experience in the world I've been in. And I've seen a lot of companies go through it as well. And, and that's real. Um, but what I would like to encourage people to do is if you can if you can discipline yourself to be thinking about that end in mind and those milestones, 
then it allows you to more uh, effectively create the business plan to execute on. So again, from my view, um, start with you know, what is the exit? What are you trying to accomplish by being a business owner? Get that nailed down, then start working backwards and go, okay, in 10 years from now, here's what the business needs to look like. Therefore, in seven years from now, here's what the business needs to look like. Okay. Therefore, in four years, here's what the business needs to look like. All right. So over the next one year, here's my immediate executable items that I need to accomplish. That will help them start on that journey of creating profitability, revenue, money coming in, but it will keep them on the straight and narrow path, if you will, towards the ultimate, uh, again, end of the movie exit uh, that's coming down in 10 years, per se. Yeah. So if you were sitting down with a brand new business owner uh, and, and you're telling them, start with the end in mind, what, what, would your, what would your first piece of advice be as far as here's what you need to aim for? Because I think everybody's got to have a target, right? So a revenue number or getting those sales, that's good. That's important. But I, I like the idea of, long-term thinking that at some point I know this is what the end result's going to be. What, what would you tell that person as far as what that needs to be or where they should start or how they need to change their mindset? Well, it comes back to me. It comes back to kind of their why, right? Why, why do they want to be a business owner? Why do they want to, what, what do they want to have in life, right? Some people go, my why is to be able to give my kids experiences that I didn't have growing up and to be able to give them options to execute and, and take part of. Uh, and I want that freedom and flexibility. Um, so you got to define that why, right? Someone else's why might be, you know, I, you had a mother that sacrificed everything as a single parent and you want to be able to give her the world. Um, that takes maybe time and money. But you got to define the emotional compelling why. And, and that's something that most people don't do either. And that's ultimately mm -hmm. what has to be the very, very beginning. Once that's in place, then you can start doing the more business specific stuff where it's like, okay, to do that, I need X number of dollars. Mm -hmm. So if I need a million dollars, then I need to create enterprise value of a million dollars in seven years, 10 years from now. Um, and that then allows you to backtrack and bring it in. There, there are too many businesses that I know that look at their, you know, their revenue number and are too proud of the revenue number, right? They say revenue is vanity. They go, oh, I'm making, you know, my business is doing $2 million in revenue. And it's like, excellent. But what is your business worth? Well, that 2 million is coming with a, you know, 7% profit margin, which is coming from one service type, which is coming from a handful <laughs> of customers. Therefore, the value, the enterprise value of your business might be a hundred grand. Like it's not, yeah. so you have, that's why you have to look at these different components uh, around the KPIs to understand how healthy is your business, how risky is your business for a new buyer? Therefore, then how you know, how much is it worth and can you exit at that at that number? Yeah, well said. Well, where do people get tripped up with this? Where where are the roadblocks for them and how are they stumbling when when they're thinking about this? Yeah, I think I think first and foremost, um, it's just the classic uh, mistake of the you know you're on your the high of a new business and you're just you're just going for it right uh, yeah. and it's the wandering generality i i love you know the certain you know, business uh that you've started you think it's really great you think the entire marketplace wants to buy it you think it's gonna be doing 100 million dollars in revenue uh every single year right there's tv shows um like dragon's den or shark tank and you see this all the time um and i think that's the classic mistake is just kind of jumping and then and then taking a step back once you've kind of hit that wall. And so I think the, the classic mistake is get a mentor, get someone, jump on a podcast like this, start to understand, okay, I need to have a good framework first. I need to mm. be really clear on where I'm going and what that looks like. Um, because really, small business ownership is hard, right? It's, yeah. it's worthwhile. It's the backbone of our you know, global economy. Um, it's really what makes a difference in, in, in people's lives around the world. Um, but it's not, it's not easy. And therefore when those struggles come, when you're running around trying to just pay the bills, if you've got this exit strategy in mind, if you've got this enterprise value at, at the foundation of everything you're doing, that, that it will give you the motivation. It'll give you the calmness to just keep being persistent and to keep making the decisions to help your business grow and to go in the, uh, in the right area. So I, I think the biggest mistakes and, and obstacles is just, it's just a shotgun approach. It's just getting too mm. wide and too, too crazy um, rather than just being calm, having that real good target that's out in front of you and then just meticulously working that plan and being patient, being persistent, being patient that you can actually get to that, uh, that number. The, the idea alone is not enough. Don't pull the trigger just on the idea, have a plan, have a strategy. That's well said, sir. Believe it or not, we're coming up on our, the end of our time together. I, I feel like we could chat for another 
four hours, but I know, I know you and I both don't have the time to do that. So we, we got to get skedaddle in here, but I always love ending these with a random question. And I know who your number one basketball player is in your mind, but I've got to ask. And for those listening, we all know if you know, Dustin, it's Michael Jordan. We know that who is the number two best basketball player in the entire world to you. Listen, my answer is going to sound a little bit uh, bandwagon-y, meaning uh, that I, I'm just going with the latest and greatest. However, um, my brother and I have been a big Steph Curry fan since he was at Davidson College. We used to go to Golden State Warriors games when he was a nobody. Uh, and I believe that his skill set and the way he's changed the game of basketball makes him uniquely. Most people say a LeBron James and a Kobe Bryant and a Will Chamberlain and all these great basketball players. But for me, the way that, that Steph Curry, his skill set and the way that he plays the game and changed the game, he'd be my number two. Confident in your answer. Love it. Awesome. Dustin, thank you so much for jumping on the podcast. Any closing thoughts before we sign off? Love it, man. I love it. Uh, this podcast is so valuable. There's so many good, good information out there for small businesses. Uh, I admire our small business owners across the world. Uh, again, they're the ones that actually change people's lives. I'm so honored to uh, spend this time with you, Paul. Thank you very much, Dustin. We appreciate it. Keep on keeping on. We'll talk to you later. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening to the Ideas Exchange podcast presented by InExpress. If you enjoyed this episode and you want to show us some love and support, please share it out with others on social media or leave us a rating and review. If you want to know more about what InExpress is, visit InExpress.com to find out what they do and how they can help you and your business. That's I-N-X-P-R-E-S-S dot com. Thank you so much and we will catch you in the next episode.